version. Going hot. Welcome to the long range shooter. Now, in my previous video, I did mention what this video is going to be about. We are going to do a new foam cutout for my 223 so I can use it in this nice hard case that I have. In case you are wondering, this is a BMW International uh, hard rifle case and it is a Type 72 and it does just accommodate this 223 of mine. Now the reason why I need to be doing a new cutout is because I've already used the foam that they supplied with the case for my other rifle. And just to give you an idea of the foam that I'm talking about, this is just a, or the cutout of the sponge for my other rifle. Now the two cutouts that you can see in that sponge is for my Sauer 270 and my 22LR rifle and they are happy to be in that case together but for this time round this case is or this cutout is just going to be used for the 223 with space for ammo and the bipod and the silencer here silencer or suppressor that you can see here behind me now I've already roughly positioned the rifle, the ammo box, the bipod and the silencer suppressor as I would want it. Now just a tip that I can give you, not that I have all of the experience, but you generally want your rifle towards the top. As you can see the carrying handle is over here. So when we carry the case we want the rifle to be in an upright position and the heavier objects to be below the rifles. So if there is the case where something maybe slips on either side of the foam so it doesn't end up hitting your rifle and causing marks. Um, the silencer is at the top of the rifle but that shouldn't really be a problem. Another bit of information that I also want to give you regarding this pick and pluck type of sponge, that's what it's called and I'll explain why now, um, is that the pick and pluck is sort of a pre-cut foam. Now it's quite difficult to show you but the foam is cut into little square or rectangular segments which you simply just pick or pluck out to uh, get the desired shape of your rifle. Now this piece of foam has really not seen uh, a lot of use or use and abuse and it is already starting to come apart as you can see over there and it is quite flimsy even if you can see if I'm just trying to hold it up the whole thing deforms so I'm rather gonna move to a solid piece of sponge like this and the sponge that you see over here is simply a high density uh, sponge and what we are going to do is I've got an assortment of permanent markers or cokey pens as the South Africans know it, and if you are perhaps American and you might know it as a sharpie. With the orientation of the rifle we are not going to draw on this side of the sponge because this is the final orientation that we wanted in. We are going to actually take the sponge out turn it around and then repack it so we can draw the outline of the rifle and the ammo boxes and so forth and then we will cut from the back side so we don't have any pen marks on the top side when we open the case to reveal what's inside. I just want to give you a bit of a better view, uh, something like a bird's eye view so you can see what the setup should look like when we are finished.
Now that you've seen the view from above, hopefully you approve of my arrangement. Now I want to get to the point where I discuss how I'm going to do the cutout because this took some researching from my part as well. And what I found there are two methods. The one method I found on YouTube from another YouTuber who did it. His name is Tibosaurus Rex. And the other method I received this morning when I went and purchased the foam. Now the foam salesman said to me that a method which works is to just use one of these um, saw blades uh, which you use to cut uh, metal parts and even PVC and he specified that uh, 32 teeth per 25 millimeter or 32 teeth per inch for the people who work with imperial units uh, works very nicely and you can just simply use it to uh, I presume saw out your um, picture or your pattern now the other method seems quite uh, innovative and it's going to be the method which I'm going to use because I'm lazy and I like making use of my mom's kitchen tools and what it basically is it's one of these electric I would say meat carving knives and it should work quite nice it's like a mini chainsaw I'm going to get to just marking out the patterns for now I think I'm not going to do the ammo boxes because I'm still experimenting uh, what the best technique or method is to carry around my ammo boxes because at this point in time I'm just putting it in my backpack um, so I'm just putting them here to get the spacing right for if I want to put them here in the future now any pen or mark pen or sharpie that will leave a mark on the sponge should do so just testing that it does make a line uh, will do so basically any of these sharpies that I've just used will work so I'm gonna get to it and then you can just watch Now, this is going to be a learning experience for both of us and I will be able to give you feedback on how well this process works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly angle my pen uh, inwards. So you actually cut your cutout a bit smaller than your actual object. That means it'll just fit nice and snug and be secure and prevent it from possibly falling out. Another piece of advice or the method which I'm following is to do your smaller items first. Um, by doing your smaller items first you can get them out of the way and then you can focus on doing your rifle as accurately as possible. Now I'm also leaving spaces um, for future additions such as if I want to add extra magazines.
I've traced everything out. I'm going to remove the rifle now and then we'll see how much trouble I made for myself. Hopefully it turns out all right. Okay, so as you can see, that's what we are left with and we're going to try and cut it out as good as possible. Right, so we've got our electric carbon knife ready and I'm going to do the first little bit and see how it goes. What I've seen is that it does work quite nicely if you work on the edge on the table so you can support the piece of sponge that you're not cutting and then the piece that you want to cut you just lean it off the table. And we're going to try and do this without losing any fingers. So what I've also seen is it helps quite a bit to make an incision um, in the middle where you are going to remove material and then proceed with this. So that's what we are going to do. So we've got a nice sharp knife over here and I'm going to do the little part over here for the suppressor and I'm just going to make a slot for the electric carving knife to be inserted and then the rest will be something like a time lapse. It really does work. I've just about finished uh, cutting out the foam piece and I believe now the only thing that we have left to do is to do some test fitting. So I've got the piece of foam over here and we're just going to simply maneuver it into this case and now we just need to get our components. So we'll start off with a suppressor which is situated over here, fits nice and snug, our Atlas bipod to come over here, and then the rifle. Now the rifle will just take a bit of maneuvering to make it fit, but it will fit nice and secure once it is in. There we go. Now another thing that we can do is, what, and I've done it already a little bit, is to mark out the trouble areas where we can really 
get away with taking away uh, more foam. For example, I see down at the end of the muzzle, we can take away quite a bit more foam. It'll just make the rifle fit more securely. But as you've seen, or you've seen what I've been doing now, and there's not really much left to it. Now, advice. First of all, I would start to tell you that you should use a permanent marker because it does uh, tend to give off quite a bit and it does look easier or it's not as easy as it looks it does take some practicing to get used to but it's quite fun and it's something you can do for yourself to improve your shooting equipment and just to uh, look after it better in general.